In this video, we're going to talk about domain, specifically in how it relates to rational expressions, i.e. fractions, i.e. the bottom of fractions, denominators. Now you may already know this, but the domain refers to all possible x values. If an equation has an x value, it's always in the domain. Those two are one and the same. So how does this relate to fractions? Um, I actually don't know. I, yes, I do. So since a fraction basically represents division, for example, 4 over 2 is the same as 4 divided by 2, which is the same as 2, Crazy things happen when we have the denominator equal to zero. We can't, in other words, divide by zero. Right, if we had seven divided by zero, how many times can I add zero until it equals seven? Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. Am I getting closer? Um, plus zero plus zero plus zero. It just doesn't make sense. Ask Siri or your calculator, they know. So the question becomes, what does a fraction with a x or a variable in the denominator have to do with the domain, all possible x values? Well, if we had x equals zero, then that would give us one divided by zero. <coughs> Remember, dividing by zero is a big no-no. And that brings up restrictions on the domain. x cannot equal whatever makes the denominator zero, because that would be dividing by zero. All right, let's see if we could identify any restrictions on the domain. Here we've got one over x. We know that this guy right here, the denominator of a fraction, cannot equal zero. So in this case, my restriction is x cannot equal zero. Here we've got five x over or divided by x minus two. We know that the denominator or this whole x minus two cannot equal zero. So, instead of x cannot equal zero this time, we take this whole denominator, everything at the bottom of the fraction, and we say x minus two cannot equal zero. Now if we solve for this, add two to each side of the equation, we get the restriction x cannot equal two. And we can check back to our original expression. We see that if we plug two in, we'll get two minus two, which would be a denominator of zero, which is exactly what we can't have. So this is our restriction. Okay, in this one, it looks like we have two different denominators to worry about, which doesn't matter. We can handle this one exactly the same way we've been doing the others. So we know that this guy right here cannot equal zero. And we also know that this guy right here cannot equal zero. It looks like we're gonna have two different restrictions for this expression. So solving these out, we're gonna get x cannot equal negative one or five thirds. Now if we run into a denominator that looks a little more complex, that does not matter. We wanna treat this exactly the same way. We know that this denominator, this whole x squared plus six x plus eight, cannot equal zero. Now, looking at this, I see this is a quadratic and we might remember that in order to solve for an x squared x constant equation like this, we can try factoring. That's gonna bring us to x plus two times x plus four cannot equal zero. Going from there, we know x plus two cannot equal zero and x plus four cannot equal zero. Solving each of these, we get x cannot equal negative two or negative four. These are our restrictions.